Many well-known brands and companies have vanished from the market. Despite the fact that all of these brands once boasted a strong brand image, billions of customers, decades of market leadership, and cutting-edge business models. However, none of these factors assisted them in remaining competitive. And some brands faded out so badly that they will never be able to recover. Examples of such hard-failed brands include Nokia, Kodak, Ambassador, Yahoo, etc. And if we talk about Nokia, in particular, it was the talk of the town for years. When we first heard of mobile phones, Nokia was the first brand on the market. Nokia's mobile phones were widely praised for their user satisfaction. It even exceeded Motorola, which was a surprising move. A company that now competes for less than 1% of the smartphone market was almost synonymous with the term mobile phones just a few decades ago. It was once a dominant force in the mobile phone market, but ultimately failed miserably. How can a company so successful ever fail? What exactly led to Nokia's downfall? The decline of Nokia's mobile phone business cannot be explained by a single simple explanation. It wasn't a single factor, but a combination of them, the majority of which stemmed from Nokia's resistance to change. Let's get an insight on the whole story of Nokia's downfall, the main reasons why Nokia failed after enjoying unrivaled dominance. Before we get into the reasons for Nokia's failure, let's give a quick look at the company's success story. So let's start from the beginning. In 1865, the company began as a pulp mill in Finland. The company made galoshes in the early 1900s. Nokia decided to drop all other business ventures and focus solely on mobile telecommunications when mobile phones became mainstream in the 1990s. It wouldn't be long before the Finnish firm dominated the market. In the early days of its success, Nokia emerged as one of the most successful mobile phone manufacturers. Nokia released the Nokia 1011, the world's first GSM phone, in 1992. Later, it overtook Motorola and won the best-selling mobile phone brand in the world in October 1998. Nokia was able to establish itself as the clear global market leader in mobile handsets during the rapid evolution of mobile communications in the 1990s and early 2000s. Nokia released 36 mobile device models in 2004 alone, in all price ranges and with a wide range of functional features. Nokia achieved a highly impressive market penetration, selling its billionth phone in 2005 and reaching a peak global market share of 39% in early 2006. It had a 50% market share in the mobile phone market by 2007. At that time, smartphones accounted for less than 10% of all phones sold, but Nokia dominated the market with its Symbian operating system. However, Nokia's global market share in mobile devices fell in the second half of 2008. In fact, its operating profits shrank in just two years, and by 2011, the company was unprofitable as a whole. Moreover, by 2021, Samsung and iPhone had surpassed Nokia's market share by more than tenfold. So, what went wrong? Well, in 2007, something unexpected occurred. The iPhone was introduced by Steve Jobs, and it was an insanely great smartphone that didn't even have a keyboard. To make matters worse, Google decided to collaborate with every smartphone manufacturer in the world via Android, a platform that would mimic the iPhone. Nokia, on the other hand, made the same phone with the same operating system over and over again. Nokia was a hardware company, and they did not understand software at all. In 2013, the same Nokia company that had a 50% market share had dropped to less than 5% of the total market. Nokia's management, shareholders, and customers were all concerned about the company's impending bankruptcy at the time. The company was on the verge of bankruptcy, but Microsoft's intervention in the market aided it in regaining its footing. Nokia was well aware that its Symbian operating system wasn't up to mark in the current competitive market. Hence, they chose Microsoft for producing excellent phones with a mediocre operating system. They eventually got a good system and good hardware. However, their flagship phone required liquid cooling and was far inferior to the iPhone at the time. Later, Microsoft purchased Nokia's phone manufacturing for $7.2 billion. Many people thought this was the final nail in the coffin. They bought the rights to keep selling them under the Nokia brand for a limited time, but they couldn't make it work either. As a result, the Nokia became obsolete. Although Nokia had given its license to HDM Global and it has finally decided to release Android-based phones now, they are, in fact, excellent. However, it's likely that it's too late for them now, and sales will not reach the levels of the past when they were mobile giants. Now, let's talk about the main reasons that explain how Nokia faded away. Resistance to smartphone evolution. 
Nokia was unable to capitalize on the Android craze. Nokia remained obstinate even as other smartphone manufacturers improved and worked on their products. Nokia's management believed that people would reject touchscreen phones and instead stick with the QWERTY keyboard layout. Its demise began with this misunderstanding. Nokia never saw Android as a step forward, and it had no intention of adopting the Android operating system. Although it was the pioneer of the first smartphones, the company was unable to keep up with the rapid pace of technological change. 2. Overestimation of Strength Nokia overestimated the value of its brand. People would still flock to stores to buy Nokia-manufactured phones, the company believed, despite the late launch of its smartphones. However, as we can see today, this is far from the case. The company was stuck with its software system, which has a history of bugs. Nokia believed that reclaiming its former glory would aid in the resolution of any problems. Unfortunately, things did not go as planned. With the introduction of Apple's product and the entry of other brands, such as Huawei and ZTE, buyers were less willing to buy Nokia products, and Nokia eventually failed. 3. High competition in the industry Apple, Samsung, BlackBerry, and Nokia were among the top contenders for the target market. Nokia, on the other hand, did not improve its service in this competition and was defeated by the other players on the market. Nokia was fixated on traditional phones, while companies like Samsung, Apple, and HTC were developing software-driven phones. Apart from the high-end competition, Huawei, HTC, and ZTE have emerged as low-cost competitors in the industry. These companies gradually gained significant market share, especially when their market share was summed up. It was a large number as a competitor for Nokia, and it had to lose the lower-end market as well, resulting in Nokia's failure. 4. Changing the Organizational Structure Nokia was operating on the mechanistic organizational structure when it suddenly thought of shifting to the matrix structure. The purpose of this abrupt change was to improve agility. However, this decision was not well received by all stakeholders, and as a result, the company's top executives began to leave. It was difficult for the organization to function without the people who had helped it achieve its current level of success. And this is undoubtedly one of the primary reasons for Nokia's demise. 5. Lack of innovation in products Nokia's problems were exacerbated by its product's lack of innovation. While Samsung and Apple released advanced phones every year, Nokia released the Windows Phone with only the most basic features. The Nokia Lumia series served as a stopgap measure, but it too failed due to a lack of innovation. The unattractive and uninteresting features didn't help matters. Nokia didn't even have 3G-enabled phones in the 4G era. Nokia also released the Asha series, but it was already too late. Nokia had the opportunity to work with Google to create Android phones, but they declined. This was one of its major mistakes. Android OS was popular because it was simple, fast, and had a large number of applications in its app store. Nokia's story would have been different if they had switched to Android sooner. The journey of what was once the best mobile phone company in the world to losing everything by 2013 is tragic. Nokia also lacked strong leadership and direction. 6. Lack of vision Internal rivalries and limited resources are problems in most companies, but a visionary leader can turn these issues into a bright future for the company. In the case of Nokia, in addition to all of the aforementioned issues, a lack of vision was also an issue. Employees at the company were never sure where they were going because of this problem. The company was satisfied with its short-term growth and ignored the large market ahead of it. As a result, new companies and competitors were able to enter and serve the market. And as you can see, Nokia's competitors have expanded their horizons and developed stronger brands than Nokia. Hence, if you think about it realistically, Nokia's failure was pretty much inevitable, and Nokia couldn't have done much to prevent it at the time. So what can we learn from Nokia's downfall? Nokia's mobile phone story exemplifies a common trait that we see in a number of mature successful companies. A decline in strategy processes over time, resulting in poor strategic decisions. One of the biggest lessons is that complacency kills, slowly but steadily. Nokia became more of a maintainer and iterator, whereas innovation comes only through reinvention, and Nokia waited far too long to make the next big bold move. It did not fail because it lacked competitiveness, but because it became too accustomed to the market. Moreover, the most interesting thing that can be learned from Nokia's rise and fall is that unique is not always good. It is better to copy sometimes. 
Nokia would still be the market leader if it had focused on technologies that brought GPS, internet, media, and other features to mobile phones like Samsung and Apple did. Therefore, a business must adapt and change quickly. Another lesson to be learned from the Nokia downfall is to never rely solely on your brand's reputation to keep or gain new customers. Despite customer demands, Nokia has repeatedly failed by relying on the same inferior technology. All because it knew that the majority of target audiences still had a favorable opinion of the manufacturer. If you found this video informative and enjoyed the content, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button as well. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask us. We will be happy to answer them for you. Thank you for watching.